this AI agent generates proposals for your SMMA or agency clients on autopilot. Now, as you can see, after you create this workflow right here that I'm about to show you today, you would be able to get this particular email. You would be able to send it along with a proposal right here with the entire project overview. And everything is from the form submission here. As you can see, we're getting the client name, the client's email, the project type, the goals, the deadline, the budget. And based on that, we have an API that creates a uh, free PDF document right here that we can add to our emails. As you can see, it even sends the budget, the proposed solutions, objectives of the entire uh, pretty much, uh, you know, service delivery, and then also project delivery as well and project overview. So in this video, I'm about to show you and break down exactly how to do this. So let's get started. Obviously, before we get started, this uh, whole template you can get in our free community. So first link down below, you have a free community and you can join. And there you can find this particular template to just download and you can just import it via file right here okay now the first note that we added right here is called on form submission now if you go to your notes here you would be able to add another trigger here and you can add on form submission this is what i did and as you can see on form submission here has a couple of different outputs now first what i did is this right here you can disregard this um, authentication as well disregard it we have form title proposal generator and I said, please fill this information so that we can generate a PDF proposal for your client. OK, this is just like a form description and form title. From there, we have form elements. Now, the elements are client name. It's a, a text element required field, no placeholders. We have client email. Again, it's a text uh, and then required field. We have project type text. Uh, again, this this needs to be required field as well. Uh, goals, text, required field, and then we have deadline, date. It's not text, it's date, and then required field. Then we have field name, budget, element type, number, and also uh, required field. And then we have form is submitted, respond when form is submitted. How this looks like if we test this out, if I unpin and if I test this out right here, or actually, let me, let me go and let me save this. Let me refresh this. And then if I go here and if I test this out only this, I will get this particular form, okay? Now here I can put the client name, for example, Mark Smith. Client's email, I'll put my email here uh, because I'm going to be sending that to my email. Project type is going to be, uh, let's say, web application. Goal is going to be to convert more users, more free users into paid users deadline since today is seventh let's make it 10th and then the budget will be three thousand dollars for this okay the budget is always in dollars just make sure um to know that if you're working in euros or great british pounds i will show you how to change that as well now once you do that you hit submit and as you can see you will get all of these inputs right here also, you will get when the form is submitted at. This is great because we're going to be using that data later on in the uh, in the, the proposal generation, okay? So what I will do here, I will pin this data. This just means that this data will stay as it is. So I can go in, I can uh, you know show you the other nodes as well. Okay, so in the other nodes, what we have is we have an AI agent, uh, and this is a simple AI agent. You simply go to AI and then just click on AI agent. And in the AI agent, what we have is we have a, a define below and we have a prompt, okay? Now, as you can see, this is a pretty extensive prompt. Now, what I did is I said, create a proposal for my client, Mark Smith, right? So I just drag this right here, in here. And I said, we're going to be working on a, and then I added right here, as you can see, web application. Again, I just add the project type here. And then for the client and the goal is to and then to convert more free users into paid users again i added the goal and this is how it populated and it will be dynamically populated so uh, yeah and then uh, and the deadline is until and then i put the deadline as well right here as you can see okay 
the budget that the client has is this right here, right? The budget. And then I put the USD here. You can put great British pounds. You can put uh, euros. You can put whatever you want. So for example, if I want, I can put euros like this, but I'm going to keep USD because I'm working in USD. And then I said, I need a professional proposal for my company that is called Fueler Digital. If you need more information, you can find it here. I put the Fueler Digital, my company's website. Do not add the timeline in the proposal. Do not put the entire breakdown of the budget. Do not forget to add today's date, which is, and then I put this right here. Um, this is the date, right? And for the signature at the end of the proposal, because we have a signature here at the end, which is, let me actually go here, this right here. So what I did is I put uh, my name, CEO of Fuller Digital, uh, and then I put just email and uh, the website here. Please return the proposal as a valid HTML only. This is very important in order for this to work for you you will need to do this. And I also said this right here, rep section titles in H1, H2 paragraphs in P, lists in UL, LI, LI and UL, and then do not include markdown, only uh, output the HTML body content, okay? No HTML or head tags. So this is very important for this to actually work, okay? From there, what I did is I added a chat model, which is OpenAI chat model. For this, you will need to go to OpenAI and you will need to add the API key. Simply go to OpenAI, um, platform.openai.com. And what you wanna do is you wanna go to API keys, create a secret key. Uh, once you create a key, go to your proposal and just paste it in here or go to your NA10 uh, automation once you plug it in uh, and go here and add a key. And keep in mind for the key, you will need to go to billing and add at least at least like you know five dollars but what you can also do is you can add an open router chat model so if you want you can delete this and you can add an open router chat model an open router chat model it, it offers free models so you can go here and you can enter an api key from open router if you go to open router here you would be able to create a free account go to keys and then create a key and then from here you would be able to plug it in Okay, and then you would be able to go with GPT 3.5 Turbo and you will have unlimited free um, actions that you can do. Uh, and this is enough for what you wanna do, okay? You can do it that way as well. I'm doing it this way, so you know, just so you know. Memory, I put a simple memory here. I put uh, a key to be five, context window length five. Um, this is not really necessary. You can even do it without it, but yeah. From there, I have a code node so this is called a code node right so from the uh, html um, from the output from the ai agent i'm getting an html and i want to wrap it so i want to wrap it and as you can see once we go here once we test this step i will test it just so you can see how this looks like uh, you'll be able to see what we will get because as you can see we're getting this particular uh, body h1 right this is because we uh, said in the prompt that we want to get the html output okay from there we have an html wrapper so what this will do is this will create this particular wrapper with ends with spacings um, so each end is a spacing and that's what we want okay it will structure the html and then what we have in is an http request node now with http request node what we did is we used a uh, service called pdf shift now this service has uh i think it has like a, we are currently on free plan but i think you can get at least like 50 um 50 generations per month um, now as you can see here you can create your new api key you just go to app.pdfshift.io slash env slash api keys or just log in and go to api keys and in here, uh, you will need to obviously copy the API key, get a key, make sure you, you're not sharing this API key with anyone. So what we're using um, for this is we are simply going into an HTTP request node and we're adding a post method, the URL, the headers here. And by the way, you can populate this, you can auto populate this by importing the curl command. You can simply go here, go to curl, copy this, and then import it here and just paste it. And then it will auto populate. And what you will need to do is you will need to change a couple of things, okay? The method is post, 
the URL will stay the same, send headers, authorization, and, and this will stay the same here. This is your API key. So once you copy this API key here, you wanna go here and paste it under this section, okay? The, now you will also have the uh, name, the value here. I think you will have two more values. Just delete them and, and type in content type application JSON. Send body as well. You will have some things. Just make sure to delete them. I think you will have like Wikipedia or something like that. Just delete them and hit send body. JSON using fields below. Here you will have source, name source, and this is going to be the source. Keep in mind this will only work if you named your uh, node HTML wrapper here, as you can see, because I'm calling it right here, node and then HTML wrapper, JSON HTML, okay? So that's what you need to have. Make sure it's the same name. And then name landscape false. So this is again body parameters. We have three different body parameters. We have source, we have landscape false, we have name uspring false, okay? This is just a, a precautionary thing, just so we know that we're getting the best possible uh, data and the best possible PDF generated, okay? From there, what we did is I added a response here to be file and to be data, okay? Now from there, from the HTML, um, and yeah, this is the HTML from the HTML wrapper here. If we test this out here, you will be able to see that we're getting a data here. And if you view this, this is our proposal for web application development for client Mark Smith. Here, we pretty much have everything, uh, the budget as well, $3,000, as you can see, content information uh, as well. Sometimes the content information will go like this. What you can do is you can put it on one page by uh, shortening your uh, AI agent prompt, okay? From there, what I did is I wanted to rename the, um, the file name, which is result PDF, because when we're sending this to email, I want it to, to be called filler digital proposal, okay? So what I did is I went in and I added a code node again. So this is again a code node. And in that code node, I just added like this. This is simply a code that will rename the file from result PDF to filler digital proposal PDF, okay? And you can change this name however you want and that's how your proposal PDF will be named after, okay? If you test this step here, you will see that right now the name is Filler Digital Proposal PDF. Everything is, stays the same, as you can see, okay? From there, we added a write file to disk node. Now, this is a node that I'm not using that often, but what you can do is you can uh, add this node, which is called write or read or write files from disk and add that note here and just make sure you write file to disk data data this will just save the file to disk so if you save it right here it will save it as you can see and then once you save this you can add a gmail node here and a G gmail node just add a send message note so if i go to gmail i'm adding gmail and i'm adding send message node okay from there i click the send message node and I wanna authenticate the Gmail account here. Just sign in with Google, it's very simple. You just sign in, you authorize, and that's it. And then from there, resource is message, operation is send, and then we're sending to, and here, as you can see, we have the client's email. So we're just dragging and dropping the client's email. And the subject is going to be called filler digital proposal. This is the subject line, as you can see here. Uh, and then we have email type is text. It needs to be text in order to have the rows uh, spaced out, okay? And what we did here in expression, I said, K, hey, and then I use this right here because, you know, when you're adding a uh, client name, for example, Mark Smith, you know, no one will say, hey, Mark Smith, right? It will say, hey, Mark. So what we're doing here is we are just removing the surname. We're just saying, hey, Mark, had a great call with you the other day. We prepared proposal for you in detail. Please check it out in the attachment. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you. Excited for the future collaboration, okay? So that's what I did. And what I also did here is I added the option to append NA10 attribution and I disabled this. If you disable this, uh, when you're sending an email, it will not say sent from NA10. You don't want that, so make sure to disable that. And then I also added the attachments here. 
in the options I added attachment and I added data right here and if I go here and if I now send this this is how it's going to look like right and if I go to my uh, email if I refresh this as you can see I have it here hey Mark had a great call with you the other day we prepared proposal for you in detail here's the proposal and everything looks really clean as you can see we have the date the client project overview pretty much everything right here okay so this looks really clean I really like the fact that we can create something like this and that is very simple to do like any any you know person can do this uh, and it's also quite cost effective I mean you're not going to be creating like you know hundreds of proposals every single month if you're a bigger company yeah sure but if you're like a smaller company and a smaller agency you know 50 for the PDF sheet 50 per month I think that's a quite enough for this okay so yeah if you have any any questions or anything uh, comment below subscribe for more videos just like this ones we're also creating more complicated uh, workflows and if you want to download this in our free community feel free to do so it's completely free so yeah you can go and you can download it so uh, yeah thank you guys for watching we'll see you in the next one